this man had incredible strength. Probably the strongest man in the Bible. As far as strength goes, there was probably nobody, maybe, maybe there's never been a man born that had the strength that this man had. Incredible strength. So he had this, this wonderful opportunity to be this strong man of God, and he was unbelievable in his strength, his stature. Incredible. Let's look at the message today. Lots of Scripture. Matter of fact, I'm going to cover chap- chapters 14 and 15. So if you're thinking about going to sleep on me, now would be a good time. Don't do it. Do not go to sleep on me, because you're going to miss a movie, buddy. This is a movie. This is crazy. Are you ready? Ready to read the Bible? Here we go. Come on. Set up. Here we go. It's like in the movies. Come on. Here we go. And Samson, now he's grown. He goes down to Timnath. And he saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, I want to check. The Philistines weren't very nice people, were they? They were the people that were keeping them in bondage, ruling over them, killing their own people. But he found some hot chick in Timnath. And he came up and he told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Wouldn't it be nice if that's how simple life was? (laughs) You're going to get her. Okay. I'm sorry. Here we go. Then his father said, and his father, now, did God command them not to go and intermarry? Yes or no? So he found a woman, and she was a what? A Philistine from where? Kim, now. Here we go. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among... Look at that. Is there never? Which makes it sound like this has been happening to this rascal. You can, you got another one? Is there never a woman among the daughters of, the, of your brethren, of the Israelites? Or among all our people? Got a couple of million here. That you got to go take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me. For she pleases me well. It's hard on me. I mean, he was big. But his father and mother knew not, very interesting scripture, that it was of the Lord that he sought an occasion against the Philistines, for at that time the Philistines had dominion over Israel. And I'm not going to get into this scripture too much. The bottom line is God used some of Samson's bad choices for his glory. Now, I don't know if you can understand that, but bad things can happen and we can even make bad choices and God can somehow, because he's still God, do things. So he doesn't depend on you just doing everything just right so this thing all gets done, because if it did, we'd all be in a heap of trouble. Amen. You see what I'm saying? So anyway, that's what we're seeing here. So Samson, is he thinking, oh, I just want this woman so I can go and whoop the Philistines' butt. No, I think he was wanting this woman because he wanted the woman. You understand? And you're going to see how God used this crazy thing. It didn't work out just like he thought. Keep looking. So we're going to look at now a strong weakness. And you're going to see this chart flow up here. And we made this to try to help us this morning. So a strong weakness. What did I learn now so far? First of all, he was strong. He had strong parents. Say that with me. He had strong what? So he had great advice, good godly advice, good wisdom. He's very strong in that. His weakness was his self what? His self-centered. It's all about me. I'll do what I want and I'll what? Get what I want. So how would you do on that one? I know, I see you nodding your head. Cut off that phone. Help us. If you can't hear it, help them. Here we go. All right, y'all good? Here we go. So, that's the first weakness I see that he had. He was self what? Good. Did he have to be? He had great parents, had good advice, he had a good path he could have walked down. He chose to do this one, correct? Okay? Let's keep the story going. So, then went Samson down... 
and his father and his mother to Timnath. And they came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion roared against Samson. Roar! And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. And he rent him, or he tore him apart, like he would tear apart a goat. Samson, this lion came to him, he took him and he just ripped him, to, ripped him apart. And he had nothing in his hand, the Bible says. He didn't do it with a knife, he didn't do it with a spear, he did it with his bare hands. But he told his father and mother not what he had done. Okay? Remember that Nazarite vow thing? A couple of things. Don't cut the hair. Not in this order. No strong drink, no wine, not even raisin bran, remember? Number three, have nothing to do with a dead body or dead carcass, dead anything. Is that correct? So he didn't tell his mom and dad what had happened. You understand? Let's keep the story going. And he went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. Don't know what that means. You just fill in the blank. And after a time, he returned to take her. And he turned aside to see the what? Say it with me, the what? The carcass of the what? So here he ain't been gone that long. He comes back and here's this rotting carcass. And behold, there was a swarm of what? Bees and honey inside the carcass of the, of the lion. And he took his hands... And he went on eating. He got that honey. Out of that dead what? Was he supposed to do that? Yes or no? Because he was a Naza. He was not from Naza. Wrath. Here we go. And so he took the honey and he also brought some home to his mom and daddy and he gave it to them and they did eat. Say it with me. But he told them not. That he had taken the honey out of the what? Exactly. See? Because they knew he had taken this special vow from, from the womb to the tomb. Remember? So anyway. So he's not doing too good on this stuff, is he, so far? Say. The intermarrying thing he's going to be doing. He's going out to a dead carcass and getting stuff out of it. But you know, I was talking to Alex, our administrator this week, about this. And that's how sin is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it looks so good, doesn't it? it? It looks sweet inside there. And I struggle with that, just like you struggle with that. But when we back up and look, we go, oh my gosh, what am I doing? You understanding? Yes or no? So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson made there a feast. For so used the young men... To do. So he goes to Timnath, the Philistine territory, and he makes a big feast among the woman and her family and her people. What have we learned? Second thing. Second point, strong weakness. Hope you're not going to sleep. Are you all right? You better stay awake. This man's crazy. Here we go. He was strong. How? Arnold. Yes, Arnold doesn't look like that now. But anyway, as for you ladies, I'm sorry. He was strong physically, but he was weak. What? What do I mean? He was carnally minded. He lacked spiritual what? Commitment. He knew what was right to do. And we all struggle with this. There's no doubt about it. We all struggle with this. But this was a major thing in his life. He had taken a special vow, but he lacked spiritual commitment. It became a trademark of his life. Amen? Had somebody this week come into my office and see me. They'd gone through a traumatic event. Horrible. And it had shaken this person to his foundation. And he confessed because this traumatic thing had happened in his life. He started to reevaluate life and his, his, his position with God and how he had been living for God. And he just openly confessed. He said, Pastor... I've just always been a backslider. I've always been in for a while, and then I'd get out. I'd be in, and then I'd get out. 
I'd be in for a while and I'd get out. And I told him, I just don't know how many more chances you've got to get in. You know what I'm saying? This is a picture of Samson, I think. You see what I'm saying? Physically strong, but spiritually he was just like this, back and forth all the time. You understand or not? Okay, come on. Number three, and it came to pass when they saw him, when they saw Samson coming for the woman with the big party, they brought him 30 companions to be with him. We're going to have some big parties. So 30 Philistine men joined him. And Samson said unto them, I'll now put forth a riddle. Say riddle with me. Riddle unto you. And if you can certainly declare it to me, Within the seven days of this feast, it isn't like our weddings where you have a rehearsal dinner on Friday night and get married on Saturday. In a Jewish custom, you have maybe at least a week of celebration all the time. And so it's going to be a seven-day feast. He said, now, if you declare this riddle within the seven days of the feast, then I'm going to give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. I'm going to give you 30 robes, and I'm going to give you 30 sets of brand-new highfalutin Suits or something. You understand? That's what I'm going to give you. But if you can't declare the riddle unto me, then you've got to give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. So Samson thinking, man, I'm going to give me a whole new wardrobe out of these people. You know what I'm saying? And they said unto him, put forth your riddle. We'll try it. We'll take it. Come on. We'll shake it. And he said unto them, say it with me, out of the eater came forth meat, and out of the strong came forth, that was the riddle. And they could not in three days expound the riddle. They couldn't figure it out. Huh. What's a weakness I saw right there? Let's look at it. He was strong intellectually. Man, Samson had the best schooling. Smart as a whip. You understand? But he was foolish. Yeah. I'm sorry. If that looks like you, sorry. Sorry. You know what he did? He liked to play little mind games. Are y'all listening? If you read the story of Samson, he didn't just do it here. We'll see it next week too. He liked to play little mind games. He was really smart. But here he is playing around with 30 Philistine men and playing little mind games. And we'll see that he did this with women. And I, I believe the Bible only tells us a little bit about the life of Samson. I believe this was a pattern in his life. He liked to play little mind games with the ladies. You understand? Do you play mind games with people? Do you manipulate people? Do you get people to respond the way you want them to respond? Are you the kind of person that says things about people you don't like? You say it in a bad way so that people around you will not like those people. See how you've manipulated them? You're playing little mind games with people. Are you hearing me or not, church? You understand? Are you really smart and you can use your intellect to control people? You hear me? That's not a strength. That's a weakness in you. You hear me today? That's what he did. Number four. It came to pass on the seventh day, almost wedding time, that they said unto Samson's wife, back in the day, when you said you go marry the man, the engagement won't, well, I can break it off Friday. Uh-uh. you married him. You're betrothed. It's a done deal. You're his wife already. It's the way it worked out. So he said, they said, they went to Samson's wife on the seventh and last day. And they said, entice your husband. Say that with me. Entice your husband that he may declare unto us the riddle. And if you don't, we going to burn you and your father's house with fire. Say what? Have you called us to take all that we have. Did you invite us 30 men here to rob us, woman? Are you crazy? You understand what they're doing? 
The Philistine man going to the Philistine woman. Okay? Isn't that what you did here? Keep looking. And Samson's wife wept before him. <laughs> and said, You hate me. You don't love me. I don't even know you, darling. In the culture, you wouldn't even have known her yet. But anyway, that's another story. But anyway, you hate me. You don't love me. You put forth a riddle unto the men of my people, and you didn't tell it to me. And he said, I didn't even tell my mom and daddy. Why, why should I be telling you? You know what I'm saying? Keep looking. And she wept before him how long? She'd been crying a long time. Woo! While the feast lasted. I'm going to give you a heads up, fellas. If the lady you're with is going to be crying seven days in a row, it's going to be rough. I'm just going to tell you. But anyway, come on back up here. <laughs> here we go. I'm sorry. And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her because she lay sore upon him. I have no idea what that means. I think she, I don't know what she did, but I'm telling you, it won't pretty. <laughs> and she told the people the riddle to the children of her people, or she told it to the fellows. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey, and what is stronger than a lion? Got it. And he said unto them, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would have not found out my riddle. That's a terrible thing to say about her. What are you doing? This is the Bible. You might wonder why I use the King James Bible for this reason right here. Some of the best words in the Bible. If you had not plowed with my heifer, you would have found out my riddle. Fellas, just another note to the side. Don't use that kind of language. <laughs> just telling you. We're learning a lot today. Keep going. <laughs> a strong weakness. What did I see here? Are y'all right? I'm not being very spiritual, am I, this Sunday? Here we go. I know you're judging me. I feel it. Roger with all these pictures. He was strong outwardly. Rip a lion's mouth apart. Strong man. Physically. His weakness. <laughs> he could be played. He liked to play mind games, right? Was he strong? Crazy strong? Yeah. But he could be played, especially by what? A woman. I'm just showing weaknesses. How many we knew that weakness of Samson? That's the one we knew. How many hadn't really thought about all those other ones? Can I see your hand? Hmm. Absolutely. Number five. Now we're going to do this one different. Instead of the Scriptures, we're going to put the point first. I'm going to finish the passage because there's a lot of Scripture. This man was powerful in battle. This man was incredible. You saw him rip that lion apart with his bare hands? Well, you'll see him in just a little bit take the jawbone of an ass and defeat like a thousand men. You're going to see this man. He was a powerful man. Incredible. His weakness, he lacked self-control. Say that with me. He lacked self-control. One more time. He lacked self-control. Ladies, any man who will raise his hand to hit you, here's my strong advice to you. Leave him. You hear him? Hear me? Yes or no? Absolutely. That's crazy. Are you hearing me? My mother lived like that and was killed by a man like that. Lacking self-control. Somebody who's emotional who's given to fits of anger and rage. That's a big weakness, isn't it? 
And you can read this story, and you can, you can, I know the Philistines were the enemies of Israel. I understand that. And he was a judge and a deliverer and all that kind of stuff. But there's no way you can read the story of Samson and not come away with the fact that this man had some problems. You hear me? Now let's read some of the stories. Here we go. We're going to do quite a few. Hang in here with me, and it's not that long to the end if you hang in here. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So the fellows had got his riddle, and he said, yeah, because you plowed with my heifer. What happened? And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. The Spirit was on him and off of him. It was on him and off of him. You understand? It was on him and off of him. I don't know about you, but I'd like the Spirit to just stay on me, wouldn't you say? But the Spirit of the Lord came on him, and, and he went down to Ashkelon, and he did what? He slew 30 men. I need 30 clothes of raiment for 30 guys. So he looked at 30 men and killed them. Took their clothes. Got that settled. He took their spoil. He gave the change of garments unto those which expounded his riddle. His anger was what? Say it with me. His anger was, and he went up to his father's house. So he goes back. Had a little break there at the wedding. The little wedding had a little bit of a break. Okay? While he went down to Ashkelon. So now he's back at his daddy's house. But Samson's wife was given to his what? Best man. He gets back. And a guy he had used to be a friend or somebody to stand in with him. Probably maybe a Philistine. The whole thing happened down there. So undoubtedly while he's gone, the father of this woman gives her to him. This is not a good thing for you to do to this man. But it came to pass within a while after, in the time of wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid, going to make an offering. And he said, I'll go to my wife into the chamber. Yeah. Going to go sleep with his wife. What's he going to do? But her father wouldn't let him go in. And her father said, I barely thought you utterly hated her because she told the riddle. Thought you were done with her. Therefore, I gave her to your best man. Told you this was a movie. And the daddy says, Is not her younger sister prettier than her anyway? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. Isn't this crazy or what? And Samson said concerning them, Now shall I be more blameless than the Philistines, though I do them a displeasure. And Samson was so angry because of what happened. He went and says that he caught 300 foxes. He took firebrands. He took these foxes and lit the tails of the foxes on fire. They're running through the wheat fields. Okay? Keep going. And he set the brands on fire, and he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines, and he burned up both the shocks and also the standing corn within the vineyards and the olives. He went absolutely wreaked havoc on that whole area. You could see the fire going for miles and miles. He was angry. Can you see this guy, yes or no? Did he have power? Did he sort of get out of control? That's what I'm seeing. Then the Philistine says, Who did this? And they answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Tim, Tim, Timnite. The son-in-law of this lady from Timnath. Because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up, say it with me, and burnt and her with they weren't kidding, were they? This is not a good situation. Have y'all noticed that? You think your wedding was bad. And Samson said unto them, Though you have done this, yet will I be avenged of you. And after that, I'll quit. I'll cease. And he smote them hip and thigh with a great slaughter. He just went through killing people. Samson. And he dwelt on the top of the rock, Edom. More power and lack of control. Then the Philistines went up and they pitched in Judah and they spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, why are you come up against us? The Philistines were coming up against them and they couldn't take the Philistines. And they answered, to bind Samson are we come up to do to him as he has done to us. The Philistine army now is coming against him. Then 3,000 men of Judah, they went to the top of the rock Edom, and they said to Samson, Don't you know 
that the Philistines are rulers over us? You've ticked off the people who can kill us. What is it that you've done unto us? And he said unto them, as they did unto me, so I did to them. And they said unto him, we're come down to bind you. His own people are now going to tie him up. That we are going to deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. And Samson said unto them, swear unto me that you will not fall upon me yourselves. Bind me up, okay, but don't kill me. Y'all going to sleep on me yet or not? Good. And they spoke unto him saying, no, but we'll bind you fast. We're going to tie you up, sucker. And we'll deliver you into their hand. But surely we won't kill you. And they bound him up with two what? New ropes. And they brought him from the rock. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord. So they're fixing to deliver him to the who? The Philistines. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. And the cords that were upon his arm became as flat. And his bands loose from off his hands. And Samson found a new jawbone of an ass. And he put forth his hand and he took it and he slew how many men with that jawbone? A thousand men. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. He liked them little riddles and stuff, didn't he? Funny story real fast. I ain't going to keep you too long, but it's going to tell you. You might say, Clark, you don't believe a jawbone of the ass or a donkey would be laying beside the road like that, do you? I believe the Bible. I believe all of it. I believe it happened just like it said. I believe it. I'm not going to preach something halfway. Like, I don't know if that happened. I believe it. You hear me? Plus, I was going to Nazareth one day and, and where Jesus grew up. I was there. Toured that land many, many times. I was riding down the road in a bus. And here's what they do to donkeys over there. Did you know donkeys are stubborn? That's why people say don't be a whatever. It's called don donkeys are stubborn. You hear me? Yes or no? And over there, let me tell you something. It's not uncommon to see a, a, a donkey with his head cut off. I was riding a bus one day, and there's a donkey laying by the road with his head cut off on the way up to Nazareth. This was not that uncommon. You understand? And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone. Was he supposed to touch that? Somebody tell me yes or no. No. And he cast away the jawbone out of his hand. He called that place Ramath Lehi. And he was sore of thirst. He's thirsty now. And he called upon the Lord and said, You've given this great deliverance into the hand of your servant, and now I shall die for thirst. So he's still, it's a weird life, the life of Samson. Here he's powerful, but he's out of control. And yet, here he's talking to God. You put me on this planet to hurt people, and I'm thirsting to death. I mean, I can't even follow the story. He said, I'm thirsty. You put me here to die. And now shall I die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But God clave a hollow place that was in that jaw, and there came water pouring out. So Samson could drink it. And his spirit came back into him and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof, whatever right there, which is in Lehi unto this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines how many years? Twenty years. So we're done with the message. Did you see there at the end the difference between the power and the self-control? Did you see it through the story? Now we're done, but I want to pop our chart back up. Here we go. Now it's our turn. Wasn't it fun picking on Samson for 30 minutes? Let's turn it on us. Let's turn it on us. Do you heed good advice? Not just from your parents, but other people that give you direction. Do you listen to good advice? Are you listening or not? Do you listen to good advice? Is that a strength of yours or are you weak? Are you self-centered? Or do you say it's all about me? Do you say I'll do what I want and I'll get what I want? That's what I learned as I was studying this week. Let's check out another one. Physically. 
are you in excellent shape? Are you one that goes around? And it's okay. I mean, you really exercise. I try to exercise, believe it or not. Try to bike, try to stay in good shape. Is that you? Is that a picture of your life, that you're in excellent shape, you take good care? What did Paul say? Bodily exercise profits what? It profits a little, really, if that's all you've got. If that's all you've got. I'm in good shape. Is that all you've got? You understand? Are you in excellent shape physically? But how about spiritually? Are you weak? Are you carnally minded? Do you lack spiritual commitment? You can't make a commitment to God and stay with your commitment. You keep breaking your commitments. You keep breaking your commitments. You keep picking up the dead carcass. You understand? Yes or no? Number three, intellectually, are you bright and knowledgeable? Maybe you've got a great education. Believe it or not, I went to college. I know it's hard to believe. Are you bright? Are you smart? Can you make a deal? Do you know how to make it happen? That's good if you're strong. That's awesome like that. But how about over here? But you're smart? But wait a minute. You act like a fool. You play little mind games with people. You know what I'm saying? What's up with that? Use your intelligence and the brightness that you have to just get what you want? Number four. Strong. Maybe you're incredibly attractive. I mean, he picked Lou Ferrigno here. Is that who that is? Looks like Lou Ferrigno. I never thought he was that attractive. But anyway, but anyway, go ahead. Here we go. <laughs> Are you incredibly attractive? And boy, you put that on the outside, and you can make it up, and you can look all that. Hey, and look, great. Give God the glory, amen? You can do it. But wait a minute. How about inwardly? Not so pretty, not so strong on the inside. You can easily be played. You understand? Number five. I mean, are you mighty and strong? I mean, you're strong physically, but maybe you're strong, and man, you can, like I said, you can make it happen. You're a leader. You can make it happen. It's great. But are you weak? Instead of being strong, and you can really make it happen because you're that way, do you take that to another level of emotional, out-of-control living, and you're given to fits of anger and rage? You understand? Did you see his life a little today? A strong what? Weakness. The man, Samson. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, say it with me, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Message is over. He had a strong weakness. I want to encourage you today. Say it real loud. Can we scream it loud? One, two, three. He's strong. What kind of strong? I want you to get this bracelet today. If you don't have one, right there. Jesus Christ strong. Amen. Hey. I hope you got something from the Word of God today. I did. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Good Word. Thank you, Lord. Amen.